Hi, I'm Robert Cothie, owner of Faxback Websites and Video, and I have also been contracted with the HIA to film all the major events for the HIA LI this year and last year. I recently realized that I'm in a way the curator of the HIA events videos. I am the unofficial ambassador of the video footage, and it is one of my missions to package it in a way that is inspiring and informative. My company, Faxback Websites and Videos, is also one of the sponsors of this HIA LI Roundtable. A couple of housekeeping points. I first want to explain about the giant Garfields, or all the Garfields behind me. Today I'm recording this from my home office. My wife is one of the top 10 Garfield collectors in the world, so there's not an inch of this house without any Garfield in it. We've got about 7,000 pieces. Check out www.lovesgarfield.com if you don't believe me. Second point of housekeeping. Actually, it's not really housekeeping. It's the sponsorship message that I'm entitled to as an event sponsor. I want to point out that my company, Faxback Websites and Videos, is actually an HIA LI member. So if you have any websites, video, or marketing ideas, we would love to sit down with you. You'll be surprised how affordable we are for the quality of work. Anyway, on February 16th, 2012, Sintu Patel, CEO of Emnil Pharmaceuticals, was the speaker for the HIA LI CEO Roundtable. I was especially inspired by this HIA event for one major reason, because I'm a nice guy. Let me explain. Almost anyone who knows me would probably describe me as a nice guy. In fact, there's much evidence that reinforces this opinion. You must imagine my horror when I consistently hear the expression, nice guys finish last. Nice guys finish last. So let's think about this. That means either become a miserable human being or fail. That's not much of a choice. Today, the HIA LI hosted the first CEO roundtable of 2012. Shintu Patel, CEO of Amnil Pharmaceuticals, and much to my delight, not only is he a really nice guy, but they created a culture of over 1,100 nice Amnil employees with one mission and an amazing company culture. Forget the fact that within two years, they'll be a billion dollar company. Anyone who attended this seminar was delighted, charmed and empowered by this program. But let's be honest, life is crazy and nobody's going to watch two hours of raw footage. The purpose of this particular video is to highlight the culture and values of Emnil Pharmaceuticals. Other videos will be put together from the footage to highlight other outstanding content recorded today and on other HIA LI events. As a fellow nice guy, this video needs to see the light of day first. Thank you for letting me indulge this rant, and please enjoy the video. Good morning. My name is Mark D'Amico, president of the Workplace Group. I would like to welcome all of you today to our showroom. We are very proud to be hosting this latest session of the CEO Roundtable with the CEO of Amnio Pharmaceuticals. We have grown with the support of the HIA here in Hopog over the last 15 years, providing office furniture to the Long Island business community. I'm sure you will enjoy today's session, and I look forward to supporting HIA in the future as they've supported the Workplace Group. I thank you all again for coming, and I hope to see you soon at the next great event. So good morning, my name is Terry Elisi Maselli, president of the HIA LI. We're here this morning with Shintu Patal, he's the CEO of Amnil Pharmaceuticals for our first, at least of 2012, CEO Roundtable series. He is going to really discuss with the group of CEOs and decision makers what Amnil is all about, how it started, and specifically, I think the thing we're most proud of as Amnil as a member is they've just been awarded a consider considerable amount of money through the Long Island Regional Economic Development Council to create and grow his business, and that's what this economy needs. So I'm going to ask you to talk a little bit about that, Shintu, um, the process you're in of, you know, adding jobs to what you do, and I know you have some new products and services sure. as well. Absolutely. Sure. Thank you, Terry. Um, HIA is doing a great job, and uh, we are a great supporter of HIA. Uh, well, Amnil is the seventh largest generic pharmaceutical company in the United States. Uh, it was started back in 2002, 2003 by myself and my family. 
uh, it was just a dream and a vision and it has really grown into a substantial business uh, we have about 1100 employees in US and 400 employees outside the US uh, we are the fastest generic company in the last two years over uh, to just won a very prestigious award from Ernst & Young National Entrepreneur of the Year Award in Life Science category. That was a great honor. And all this is because of uh, fantastic people and the group of guys that's working day in and out. Um, in Long Island is our hub, it's our home. Uh, this is where we are really growing our business uh, and as you already mentioned before that we have a very large expansion uh, planned out in our Brookhaven facility that's at 50 horse block road uh, we are uh, that would be able to create about 400 new jobs uh, once the project is completed that's uh, in about 2014 the whole project is a very uh, big project one of the biggest in the area it's about 400,000 square feet uh, extra addition uh, and it would make one of the biggest pharma plant in the entire state of New York uh, the project itself will also create a lot of construction jobs for the local economy uh, and it's a, a great thing uh, and uh, uh, for going forward it will enable MNEIL to bring out a lot more products uh, in a different dosage forms uh, and it's a win-win for everybody uh, it's about 50 60 million dollar project and we are very proud to do that right here in in, in, in United States uh, we are 100% making all the product and still being competitive in this tough economy so it's a great honor thank you thank you thank you Help us welcome up the CEO of Amnil Pharmaceuticals, Shintu Patel. So I'm a, by education, I'm a pharmacist. I graduated from Rutgers back in 1994. Uh, spent five great years at Rutgers, uh, learned a lot, and then worked as a simple pharma manager at Eckerd Drugstores for eight years. Uh, came to this country about 25 years ago when I was 15 years old. And my first job was in a candy store in New York City where I made about $3.35 an hour. And that was also a great experience, what I learned there. And uh, back then, uh, I, I couldn't communicate properly in English because I learned, I knew how to write, but I couldn't speak when I was 15. So that job taught me how to speak English. So that, see, everything we do in life has a value. Uh, I explored New York City at the age of 15 and that was the fantastic experience. Um, Amnil is a family owned, so my, my brother is totally involved. He's the president of the company. My dad is a backbone. Uh, he's kind of semi-retired, but I uh, cannot thank him enough. I'm happily married, my wonderful wife, and I have two daughters, young, nine and 12, and my wife is a, has a lot to do with where I am today, so I really have to thank her for the success of uh, Amnil and the entire family, my parents and my brother and everybody. So, but as a pharmacist, you don't have ground. So I had no industry background, I had no clue what the pharmaceutical industry is about. Because as a pharmacist, I knew what the drugs were about, what the drugs are used for. But I did not know how to make the drugs. I had no money either. I was a regular middle class family. I only had a $75,000 savings. Um, but when I talked to people that I wanted to do something, they all laughed at me. And they said, oh, come on, you don't know what you are doing. We are the expert. There were many other companies and groups. So against all odds, to make the story, uh, I can go on and on. But to make again, uh, against all the odds, I met so many people in the industry. Uh, and they all told me, you need millions. Because if you don't know, the pharmaceutical industry is one of the industry where investments are very, very high. And the period to get your ROI, return on your investment, is very long. It takes about three to four years to get one product approved and put it back into the market. So you are stuck with your investment and it takes about a million dollars to do one product. But I didn't know any of those things. So I, I always say that when you don't know something, it's the blessings. <laughs> like if you don't know how deep is the water, you're going to jump in and try to swim and float. So that's what I did. I had no idea what the hell I was doing, seriously. To be put it frankly in a blunt way, I had no clue. So I just get in there, but I knew that one great thing was I knew that I could, once I'm in there, I could make things happen. So that's where Emily started. My name is Frank Vitale. I'm the director of marketing at Grassi & Company. 
Uh, we are a CPA firm based out in Jericho, Long Island. Um, unlike uh, many traditional accounting firms, we offer more than just your basic audit and tax services. We order a lot of business consulting and technology consulting services as well. And we serve a variety of industries, including manufacturing distribu distribution, not-for-profit, healthcare, construction, architects, and engineers. Um, we uh, love supporting the HIA and our uh, sponsor of the uh, CEO Roundtable Series because in order to serve our clients better, we need to know what the issues and challenges uh, uh, that they are facing. And uh, by coming to these events, we're able to understand them better and serve them better. And of course, we believe in uh, the HIA's missions to really uh, to develop and uh, revitalize uh, the industrial business and business in Long Island in general. In our business, vertical integration is key because supply chain, controlling your supply chain is number one criteria in our business because it's not that we can switch on and off our suppliers, especially in pharma industry. Once we qualify a supplier, you are married to that supplier. So if that supplier has something wrong, your business is in jeopardy. You cannot go and get a raw material for somebody else. It's a process which takes many, many years and many company has gotten into a lot of problems and issues because of that. So we went and we went ahead and built our own API plan. And we are trying to become as much fully vertically integrated as much possible. The last thing is very important. How do you now, as, you, as, you, as the company is growing, myself and my brother always discussed and decided that the one thing we don't want to lose is our culture, our sense of family values, who we are. And I always believe that discipline Discipline is not coming to work every day, 9 o'clock, but discipline of your thoughts, who you are, your fundamental beliefs should never change. Doesn't matter if you are a 100 people company or you are a 1,000 people company or a 2,000 people company. For us, that strong sense of family values of one group working for one mission, that's uniqueness, same, you know, people, everybody's accounted for, everybody has a role to play. That's very important and successfully we are able to give that message to all of our employees. Because end of the day, they are the owners of the company. Without them, it's not possible. So that was very, very important that we wanted to keep that going, doesn't matter the size of the company. And same time, when we do that, we, we could provide the best customer service uh, to our customers and also take care of our suppliers. Um, you know, well, this is something uh, what we did uh, about three, four years ago and then we revised it, but we got together and we had our own employees come up with our mission, our vision, and our guiding principles. It's not done by any consultants. It's not uh, uh, done by somebody putting nice words together. It was done by 30, 40 employees together and then about a year and a half ago, about 100 people give their input. It's their words, what they believe. So certain things are very, very important. Always the first one is very important is think, decide, and act like owners. We all, we are the only company um, which has taken care of its people in even equity form, which is not uh, uh, normal in a privately held company. Respect and care for every individual. Can you go back, please? Uh, Alicia, can you go back? Uh, uh, respect and care for every individual. I always tell my people that people on the floor are as important as the VPs. Your janitor is as important as your VPs. And not in words, but genuinely you have to love and respect. We, end of the day, we all are human beings. And when you respect and love that person, many people just need a pat on their back in the morning or nice smile with a good morning or you know, be there when they have trouble. And that's very important. That's when we do that, they all become part of the system. Uh, we always believe that we should have to provide the resources to people to perform their full potential. We have to have fun and celebrate the success. And very important, work with honor, trust, and integrity. We are in pharma business. Honest integrity is very important. That comes right from the top all the way to the bottom. Um, we are. Uh, FDA government and FDA is, is very strict body. I personally of this company has attended 22 FDA inspections, including one we completed last week in our Patterson, New Jersey. So we take quality, honesty, and integrity, everything very, very seriously. It's one of our highest, uh, number one goal. What we do is every year, myself and my brother, we come out with the 
five goal and number one goal is always quality and compliance that's always been the case and number two is always health and wellness of people we are a company which is pushing people to be healthy eat good food uh, exercise get rid of your bad habits help and treat each other because um, quality of life is very important than the quantity good morning this is Bob Plank Capital One Bank we are a full service commercial and personal business banking and personal center uh, we look to do uh, personalized service for our customers. Uh, we're within, you know, we're in, in the New York uh, metropolitan area, also down Louisiana and, and Virginia as well. Uh, we're here to sponsor Amneal Pharmaceuticals LLC for the HIA. And then uh, in 2005, as you know, this business requires tons of money, tons of money. Uh, it's not a, a small chump change. Uh, we realized that either we I and my family, my brother, my dad, we sat down and we, we talked about it. Either we can be a small company and just grow organically, and it was a big decision, and be, you know, 20, 30 million dollars in revenue and just do small things. We could be and, you know, be 100% own the company. But that's no fun. So I and my brother talked about it, and uh, we decided that it's time to get an investor on board. But I made it very clear to my brother that the one thing I don't like is the VC, term VC. I didn't even know what they do, but I heard, and I said, I don't want any venture capitalists coming in because, again, that fundamental discipline in my thoughts of keeping the strong sense of family values would be lost because VCs has a very short-term goal of coming in and out and flipping the companies. Many people know that, and I didn't want to do that. So I and my brother talked and we said, look, only way is we have to look for a family, friends type of investor who really wants to diversify and wants to do something new and who's going to be with us not 10 years, 15 years, 20 years. And so we long hold, we found somebody through my brother's contacts, uh, his ex-partner knew somebody in California and, and he joined and he's like a brother now. It's the, our entire body is three people, myself, my brother and uh, uh, Mr. Tushar Patel, he's the investor. We've been honored with uh, so many top industry awards within the last 18 months. Um, we just won um, in a December Ernst & Young Entrepreneur of the Year Award. That was a very prestigious award uh, in a life science category for the national award. And uh, uh, a lot of key individuals were there, including George Bush, our ex-president was there, Jay Lano was the host was wonderful, was a very funny guy, <laughs> uh, but it was a great uh, uh, honor and next week they have invited the, all the ex-entrepreneurs to go to Washington DC and visit the White House and uh, Capitol Hill and talk to some senators and that, that is being organized by ENY next week. So it's a really great thing. Good morning, Brian Van Zandt with NST. Uh, just wanted to say thanks to the HIA for having us at the CEO Roundtable sponsor uh, at the Workplace Group. This is my birthplace. This is, I, I, I never forget. And see the sentimental values. I could have shut down this plant three years ago, two years ago. But I do not want those people to lose their jobs because this is where I started. It's hurting our bottom line. <laughs> Seriously, it is hurting our bottom line. Our cost of manufacturing here is high because it, it, it's not you know, uh, that economical to operate. But I'm forgetting that dollar, I'm looking at the people who were there with me in 2003 sweeping the floors. I'm never ever going to forget them. So that's why we are keeping that plan. <laughs> Our success is, uh, it's a family owned uh, business. Uh, I already mentioned that it's very small. It's not a bureaucratic process, it's not a corporation. It's a nicely family owned operated business. Same times uh, we do things uh, you know, in, in a proper professional manner, but we have that feeling. Uh, decision making is very um, fast sometimes. Uh, the, we avoid any rate tap, and a and, uh, lot of people getting involved. Uh, we never take people for granted, it's all about people. I've been saying that it's our success is because of the fantastic thousand employees that is working day in and out. Without them, we, we cannot be where we are today. It all boils down to them, and getting the message and connecting. I call it a human touch. 
And uh, even at this point, uh, back in 2004, five people used to tell, you know, and people like to advise each other, that's human nature. Free advice, okay, no money. Um, so they say, oh, when you grow, you know, it's all easy to talk, you, you, you cannot possibly do that. But we have proven them wrong. Today's date, I was just telling Terry before, that the 2003 Chintu is same Chintu today in 2011. Whether it's my lifestyle, yeah, I can afford a big home. Yes, I love to have a home, but my fundamental values, my, my beliefs, my care, and my love for people and connectivity with people hasn't gone. I still go on the floor, I connect with people, I love my employees, I love my operators, and I always say I love my bottom level people more than my VPs. I get tough with my VPs. But when it comes to my operators, I love them because they are very important. We forget that. A lot of CEOs and companies surround themselves with 10 people all day long. And they get, it, they get into this cubby hole and this thought process where they are seeing the company through their eyes. I don't want to do that. I want to see the companies through 1,000 people's eyes. I want to see it be by myself. I want to go and see and feel what it likes to be. What are their problems? What are their concerns? I want to stay connected with those people. And successfully, so far, I have managed. And we'll continue to do that. Um, we always focus on collaboration and co cooperation, and that's not only with the customers. We supply to all big seven customers. These like Walgreens, you know, CVS, they all are our customers. Um, but we also take care of our vendors, because without our suppliers, we cannot exist. So it's the entire supply chain collaboration is very, very important. You cannot treat somebody bad. Anybody, I always tell people, anybody walking into MNIL, you do the business is secondary, but respect and love for that individual, even somebody coming out, filling out an application, must be treated fairly. You cannot ignore, you cannot have people waiting for one hour, two hours, because they are just there for a job. Um, they always tell in the industry that MNIL is a bunch of nice guys. We are fantastic. They go out. They really genuinely care about customers' concerns. And we are known as a bunch of nice guys. Uh, even if somebody calls, even I, I, don't, I don't think that I'm a CEO, so I, it's not my problem. I'll let the team handle. I'll get into it. Why customer order is not there? Let's work on it. And we really get their concerns, and we try to address them. And they can see. See, everybody's smart. They, they can realize and feel when somebody is just faking things or when somebody is genuinely, passionately have that commitment to live by their words. That's very important. Hello, I'm David Jerome with People's Alliance Federal Credit Union. We're one of the proud sponsors today of the HIA. Um, we're a full financial institution that's not for profit, and we've been in business since 1940. We have Visa cards with rates as low as 9.9%, and we offer full financial services. Thank you. First A, the company last 10 years, luckily knock on wood, we stayed out of compliance tr trouble all the time because even we had a successful FD inspection, we don't sit back. Personally, I don't sit back. I became even more, hy more hyper, saying that, hey, they are coming, they are coming tomorrow, let's make sure. So they're always on lookout. So that productive paranoia, I call it, has helped us to create and that worry and that fear into action. So that's why we were always at at edge of having always compliant 100% in all factors. A lot of companies, at least five companies were shut down, big, big size companies in the last five years. A company like Randbuxy just recently paid $600 million fine. Apotex had, was shut down for two years. A company with a revenue of $2 billion. J&J, uh, uh, look at J&J. Look at just a recently Novartis, these brand companies. But for them, a billion dollar fine doesn't matter because they are doing 40 billion. But for us, we cannot afford that. So I always wanted to make sure that the two things, the business in generic is already there. I don't have to go and create market. We are not there to create markets. We are there to supply the product and bring out the products. Markets are already pre-existing. So what are the important thing? Is the cost that I can supply in time, control the cost and stay out of the compliance problem. It is all simple logic and common sense, but people take things a lot of for granted.
And when you take things for granted, you become complacent. And that message then trickles down and people start only looking at the numbers and they forget the bigger picture. So that's what is being avoided um, for us. And these are the few things that's made us very successful even the downturn. That few other companies' problem gave us the blessing and we were able to react and supply products where there was a shortage in the market. And then the customer saw that and they stayed loyal with us. Hi, my name is David Huang. Um, I'm from Verizon and we're actually the sponsor of HIA's um, CEO Breakfast Series. Uh, we believe that this event is very important for us because we will like, we of uh, Verizon Bios definitely are the backbone of a lot of small business, businesses and we help them grow and sustain their business. Um, we definitely look forward to working with HIA and also with, also with other small businesses as well. Thank you. So with that guys, you know, it's been a wonderful journey. Uh, we support HIA. Uh, thank you, Terry. Terry and the group always do a fantastic job. And uh, we like to help and support the new upcoming entrepreneurs. I still remember my good days when I was 31 years. Uh, I had no idea. You know, it's funny. I had no idea what the S Corporation was back then, or C Corporation, or LLC. I'm like, whatever, you know, just name it. Let's start, you know. I just wanted to start something. Uh, but it's, uh, you learn. And as long as learning is a continuous process. And I, I'm still, every day I'm a student, I learn from my people. I have much more smarter people than myself. So a uh, long way to go, uh, it's just the beginning. We are here to stay for a long time. We continue to do good work, we have good intentions. And we have a good intention and good work, end of the day nature takes care of everything. So thank you very much guys, if you have any question. In the next couple of years, you will write a bestseller. <laughs> how to work with people and making people your biggest profit. Yes. And I think that's, and, and the dealings I've had with your company, everything you say, you do. I think most of us would be very interested in, in starting a company. I started my own and I know what it was like the first couple of years. Is how did you secure the financing in the first two years to start the company and get to the point where eventually you reach critical mass? Uh, that's a great question. The first two years, right, as I said, uh, I had other two partners, the two other pharmacists, and uh, we all were uh, working people. So total we came up with $200,000, and what we did along the way then, mortgaged everything. I mortgaged my home, so did my partners, went out to small friends and family, borrowed from them. So it was a continuous process. Every Friday, I was scrambling to make the payroll. I've never missed a payroll, but every Friday, opened up as many credit cards as possible, reached the limit, and to today's date, again goes back to people. Joe, the people, I had wonderful people. I still remember, and it sometimes brings tears in my eyes that they would come to me and ask, can we deposit the paycheck? They would hold it for two months. They would hold it for two, three months, and they would come and ask, can we deposit this paycheck? When they see me upset or down, they would come and ask. In our culture, they call Chintubai. Chintubai, do you need money? We can give you $20,000. So that's what we did the first two years, where it was a group effort. Everybody knew. Nobody demanded uh, extra salaries or raises. Nobody was uh, after money. They all wanted to see us succeed. And that's why it all boils down to my wonderful people. I think it's awesome that you've put so much emphasis on culture and the value of the people. But I think you have also mentioned that you've been acquiring different companies throughout to actually you know, put the mis uh, missing puzzles. Um, how did you actually you know, enforce the value and the culture to your acquired companies? Because as you make the acquisitions, that whole implementation is such a bigger part where different companies go in their own ways and they have their own values, which could potentially you know, increase conflicts and other things. So it would be interesting to hear how we kind of tackle that and how you were able to integrate better so that eventually led to a success. Right, uh, again a great question. Yes, uh, integrations are always tough. Uh, and especially when you go out and try to integrate. When we bought Interfarm, they had 375 employees. We had 120 people. Uh, but again that uh, point that I, I said before, the people are smart. They know 
when they are talking to whether you are faking or you are genuinely giving your values and culture. What we did was we had put our own people, certain key people in operations and in quality and all that, that worked very hard to bring and to translate that message about what Amnil is all about. And the people in the previous companies were already frustrated. So when they saw that this is a caring company, they really mean well for people. Uh, and when you connect at the flow level, that's why I say it's very important for me and that's what I also personally did, is to connect to that flow level people and sharing everything with them. They were not working in silos or in dark. When you have open communication, when you make them part of the process, when you treat them like family, and that communication, continuous communication, they were able to understand what Amnil is all about. And then the results, right? After that, when they saw the results in 2009 and 10, 11, they got completely sold that this is the way to do the things. If the results were not there, maybe they might have debated. So I think the results, the genuine care for people, and getting the message in a very simplistic form to the people, what Amnil and what our values and culture is about, not complicating. You know, no red tape. Uh, I mean, even today's date, when people have to come to my office, they don't need to go through secretary. I mean, I'm an open door. A lot of people just walk in all the time. Nancy walks in all day long. <laughs> <laughs> all right, thank you all.